guys, today we have this really cool buffet from the 40s. It's actually the bottom half of the hutch that we did a few weeks ago. We're doing this piece for a friend and it's going to be a mid-century modern flair beauty. So join us as we see if we can give this baby a second chance. Woo! <laughs> So what do you do with a family heirloom that the kids don't want? So we got this china cabinet as a gift because of that reason. We proceeded to put it on Facebook for $300 for three months and no one wanted it. And I really wanted it gone. It was taking up a lot of room in my garage. So once we finally had the time to tackle it, we decided the next best option was to separate it into two parts. We just did the hutch a few weeks ago. You can see that video here. And this week we're tackling the buffet. And between the two of these, what we couldn't sell for $300, we now have sold for $11.25. So here's a tip to you. If you have a huge piece like this that can be broken up into two different pieces and repurposed, do it. Refinish them and list them separately. When we're getting that before footage, I love getting a little bit extra footage from the Instagram reels. We have so much fun with those. If you're not following us on Instagram, head on over there. We're just Second Chance Ohana. And I sometimes let out a few dance moves, and man, mom just loves those, so I had to give her a show. Well, all that money we spent on those dance lessons when you were a kid are now paying off. Woohoo! <laughs> Go, girl! Go, girl! While Danny's doing all the fun of cleaning and taking the hardware off of this piece, I just wanted to mention that this piece does have some issues and we were a little overwhelmed when we first started. I mean, really, it's kind of why we hesitated to even get started with it. I know, look at the top. I mean, it has holes in it, right? The keyholes are missing keys. <laughs> I know, we gave the key away <laughs> with the lady we sold the hutch to, so gotta solve that problem. <laughs> I know, the doors wouldn't even stay shut unless they're locked. <laughs> And I really thought this piece was actually quite ugly because the drawers and the doors had turned green while all the other wood was still a very bright red mahogany. To our surprise, when we sanded down that top left part of the door, we were shocked to see how gorgeous that veneer is. It's a beautiful mahogany veneer. Dings and scratches and gouges. Oh my. After we got all that greenish finish off of the drawers, we noticed that underneath where the hardware was, it was still a very dark reddish brown from the stain. Apparently the sun had damaged the old finish so much that it was easy to remove everywhere except under those handles. Usually that's not a problem, but we're going to be using new hardware and we need it to look all the same, very uniform. I think we're going to have to sand down a lot. Thankfully, this is really thick veneer, so I think we can go all the way down to 120 and just keep going. See if we can get a nice even color all the way across. Well, I guess there's no repair in that top. It would require more Bondo than what we have. So instead, we're just gonna take this baby off and thankfully it's only secured with a few screws and a bunch of nails. And I think we're gonna have to make a new top. Run! This is that top drawer that folds down kind of like into a little secretary. Well, 
There's no screws for the back of the hardware on the inside of this drawer. So for some reason, my mind jumped to the conclusion that they must have put the really thick veneer over the screws to hide them. So let's get rid of this veneer so we can unscrew the hardware and get rid of it. Are you sure you want to do that? Don't do it. So I will say, I went to Instagram to ask for your opinions. Matthew, shout out to you because you said, are you sure they screwed through? Maybe they're just glued on or attached to the front. So I went and I tried, but I was so afraid of damaging the veneer on the front, I gave up that method. So we're gonna make this nice and damp, soak this veneer so it's easy to get off. Let's see how this goes. We are going with our favorite two-tone look for this piece. So part of it's gonna be natural wood and the other part will be painted. So for the painting part, we are scuff sanding and we're doing that with 180 and the purpose is just to scuff up the finish so that the paint will adhere a lot more easily. Now I've got my trusty steamer to try to steam this adhesive loose to get up the veneer. Just let it go, Danny. Hey, you weren't saying that when I was doing it. Hindsight is 2020, okay? Thank you guys so much for being here. We appreciate you more than you know. So thank you for showing up, for watching, for subscribing, that's huge, for commenting and liking, and even for using our Amazon links if you're gonna be doing some Amazon shopping. It really helps our tiny business. So thank you guys, we appreciate you. The surf prep strikes again. So nice having that surf prep for these rounded corners. Do you guys know that lumber is up 30% again? It's almost at that all time high price. So we chose a more inexpensive type of wood. This is edge glued pine boards. And we're just gonna trim it down to size and then we'll have to jigsaw those cutouts. I cheated a little and used that old tabletop as my template so I knew exactly what to cut out for these notches. So using this piece of wood as a guide, I jigsawed right through and this stuff is soft. It went through like butter, but it also means that it could squiggle a little bit. So I had a few things I had to go back and fix later. You know those big box stores always have the best prices for lumber, but it is hard to find good lumber without any cracks. So we had to fix this one up. Okay, it's the next day and the wet towels have been sitting on this overnight. This baby is coming off today. Mom, thanks for bringing your chisels over. <laughs> it's making this easier. Let's get it off. Oh my gosh, you guys, I've gotten so far. There should be a screw right here. 
<laughs> Matthew was right. It's got to be glued on from the front now that I've completely ruined the veneer. Well, that veneer is now water damaged and ruined. So let's take it back to raw wood and bondo the heck out of it. <laughs> do what we gotta do. You know, over the last two projects, We've discovered lightweight spackle. I'm not sure what brand this is, but it will be linked down in the description below. We just love it. This is the best stuff for those tiny little holes that you need to fill. It's just very easy to put on and it sands like a dream. Yeah, just don't use it for those big gouges because it'll crack. It's just too lightweight, it so you is. want real putty for the larger gouges. Call me crazy, but I actually love the way this stuff smells you now. You're so weird. <laughs> it's like, you know how you love the smell of gasoline? Well, maybe no. you <laughs> maybe you don't, but some people in this world do. That's me with Bondo. I know it's strong and I shouldn't be smelling it, but it's toxic. And after COVID, I'm just glad to be smelling anything. <laughs> That's your problem. Okay. We're going to be using new hardware for all these drawers and doors, and we will not be using the same handles. Since we're keeping this wood, we need to hide these as best we can. And rather than just filling these holes up with a ton of wood filler or a ton of Bondo, we really want to keep these natural. So I have a quarter inch dowel that we're just going to wood glue right in. And then we'll cover them with a little epoxy that we can blend in a little later on. Before we stain or poly wood pieces, we want to make sure that there's no swirl marks or any flaws because you guys saw that I was wood gluing those little dowels in, so I want to make sure we sanded all that glue off, otherwise it's going to leave a huge mess. So by wiping mineral spirits all over these drawer faces, it shows us exactly what it's going to look like with poly on it. And thank goodness we sanded enough. They look amazing. Well, this is as far as we're going to take it today, you guys, because we're still not done yet. Oh, this piece has kicked our butts, but we are so close to the finish line. So stay tuned until next week when we finish this baby up. You get to see the reveal of what color we're painting it, get to see how that tabletop looks, finally get to see how the veneer wars ends as well as watch us overcome a few other obstacles that came up so thanks for watching today you guys and we'll see you right back here next weekend aloha, aloha.